so this is how the ev policy has been introduced to the uh, the india in each and every state so state policies have outlined a good mix of demand a good mix of uh, demand which would incorporate incentives for promoting ev adaptation in their particular region so for a small example let me just put it in a different way so the charging station which has been installed in delhi is scheduled for every 3 kilometers but the charging station which has been scheduled to be installed for next 2 to 3 years has been planned for every 25 kilometers so the regional impact of delhi says that there should be charging station for every 3 kilometers whereas for tamil nadu it is nearly 25 kilometers so based upon the regional impact the state has come up with their own ev policy and it has been slowly started to initiate in their own states i hope kerala have also initiated this particular uh, state policy for ev and tamil nadu have also joined the hand and more or less the remaining state have also approved the same in the coming uh, months so talking about uh, the delhi ev policy in delhi electric two wheelers e rickshaw goods carriers would receive an incentive of around 30k whereas electric cars would receive an incentive ranging from 1000k to 150k whereas government plans to make public charging facilities for every 3 kilometers in delhi so this is how the ev policy has been scheduled for different states in according with their regional impact and talking about the electric vehicle population uh, in india by 2040 the electric vehicle penetration was not too high in india but as the year keep on increasing you can just see electric vehicles then and there even in their uh, in our daily routine from our house to our office place and all put together you can just slowly understand the penetration of ev uh, is taking it won't share in the overall uh, automotive two wheeler and four wheeler sector and it has been predicted that it will just reach its peak by 2030 it is also aligning well with whatever the news that we have seen earlier that is both zomato and uh, flipkart has pledged that they will convert all their door to door Uh, delivery vehicles into ev and it is targeted that by 2030 india would face a huge number of ev in the road sides and uh, talking about the population scenario in this particular point of time by 2010 overall the internal combustion engine was only ruling the entire uh, automotive market field but as the year keep on increasing the role of internal combustion engine has slowly start to get stepped down and the penetration of ev and HEV have started to initiate it. So HV stands for hybrid vehicle and PHV stands for plug-in hybrid vehicle. So this plug-in and hybrid vehicle is nothing but the combination of both internal combustion engine and electric motor. So it is a combination of internal combustion engine and electric motor. And even now you can just Google about um, Fesino hybrid. So Fesino has launched their hybrid vehicle variant, which will make use of both. internal combustion engine and an electric motor plus battery combination in its vehicle so by the year of 2020 the penetration of hybrid vehicle would be enormously high and the penetration of ev would be at a minimal portion but as the year keep on increasing the ev penetration would also be higher as the year we are just marching towards 20 30 or 2040 but dominantly the role of internal combustion engine would be entirely eradicated and you will have only the vehicle by the name of hybrid vehicle and it won't be called as internal combustion engine after 2030 or 2040 so this internal combustion uh, hybrid vehicle is nothing but an internal combustion engine which is assisted by an electric motor so this hybrid vehicle will have the primary energy source as internal combustion engine so that means that nearly 51 percentage of power would be delivered by your internal combustion engine and only 49 percentage of power would be delivered by your electric motor and battery combination so the hybrid vehicle would be an internal combustion engine which have the primary energy source as internal combustion engine and secondary energy source as ev in terms of battery plus motor combination so if this percentage get varied then the primary energy source would be get converted into ev so to make the internal combustion engine alive for next 20 to 30 years they were, they have just coined the term as hybrid vehicle and they are trying to make the internal combustion engine alive for next 20 to 30 years so that is the reason why we will have more number of hybrid vehicles uh, in next 10 to 20 years and you can you can also even browse about maruti sias 
so in terms of four wheeler sector maruti sias is about mild hybrid vehicle so in case of mild hybrid vehicle the degree of hybridization would get vary so in case of mild hybrid the degree of hybridization would lies between 20 to 30 percentage so just by making use of the interesting term hybrid they they will just try to make the internal combustion engine alive for next 20 to 30 years and uh, you can also see the officially sales of uh, both electric and internal combustion engine vehicle worldwide you can just see there is a great downfall in the internal combustion engine share and there is an uphill in the electric vehicle share per worldwide uh, tesla is dominant dominating with 14 percentage which doesn't have an internal combustion engine sector whereas volkswagen uh, renault hyundai each and every company have started slowly have started their own electric vehicle r&d team and they are also coming with their electric vehicle in near future so this is the electric vehicle population in india and worldwide at this particular point of time and let us start with the history of electric vehicle in a brief manner to have a better understanding so nothing is under the new horizon both electric cars and internal combustion engine uh, have been around for more than 100 years so this is the realistic fact that uh, lies in the year so it was in 1832 the first crude electric vehicle was introduced it was in 1832 the first crude electric vehicle was introduced and it was in 1899 uh sorry it was in 1893 the first internal combustion engine was commercialized if you just see the time scale between both the internal combustion engine and electric vehicle both are under the same horizon it was in uh, the early 18th century and it was in uh, the late 18th century so both lie in the same horizon but what happened to the electric vehicle is what we are going to see in near future in the upcoming slides so both started their time scale or both started their career in the same time scale of 18th century and even at that particular point of time particularly society women the society women was much more eager to travel with an electric vehicle and they doesn't prefer an internal combustion engine vehicle because at the early stage you need an additional cranking setup to start your engine and whatever the emission that emit from your uh, tailpipe was enormously high at the early time scale so that is the reason why the society women are more or less the working women highly preferred the electric vehicle so electric vehicle gain popularly particularly on the society women so this actually happened at the end of 18th century and it was in 1901 edison takes on the electric vehicle with batteries and it was in uh, the same year they have come up with an hybrid electric vehicle concept so that is where people were talking about both making use of both internal combustion engine and and ev into one sing single system so just think about the same scenario electric vehicle with battery was introduced in 1901 but now as a research forum we are just discussing about these electric vehicle in 2021 so far past these time scale it was only the internal combustion engine was ruling the entire automotive market field and the development of electric vehicle was not in was not in the picture for past 100 years and now it has just slowly started to penetrate and what actually happened after this uh, introduction of electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle is that in 1920 to 1935 there was a great downfall in the electric vehicle particularly among the human mankind so one of the main reason is the charging station so the charging station and the weight of the vehicle so both together create an enormous amount on the electric vehicle users and they have slowly started to switch over from internal combustion sorry electric vehicle to internal combustion engine because at that particular point of time the charging of battery was not much more sufficient and whatever the charge that can be effectively used for the propulsion was not much more efficient at that particular point of time so all put together the human mankind have slowly switch over from internal combustion uh, electric vehicle to internal combustion engine and the, slowly the electric vehicle has completely disappeared from the automotive market and it was in uh, 1968 to 1973 the gas price have started to soar to a greater extent so this create an enormous amount of pressure Uh, in the automotive manufacturers that the only energy that rely on for the propulsion of internal combustion engine is the crude oil or 
gasoline and diesel so when the price have started to rise and the dependency of the price uh, is based on one particular gulf nation so this created a very big threat to the entire nation and the entire world so this created a small park to think about the usage of alternative energy source for the propulsion vehicle so thereby the interest of electric vehicle gain its popularity once again in the automotive makers mind so it was in 1971 where the electric vehicle was the, was there in year uh, particularly when nasa make use of a lunar rover that runs on electricity for its propulsion so this particular news was there in year in the year in the time scale of 1971 so this slowly uh, initiated or this slowly created a small spark in the automotive makers mind to make use of this electric vehicle for their propulsion and it was in 1973 the next generation electric vehicle was introduced so general motor develops a prototype of an urban electric car and they just displayed the same prototype in an uh, low pollution and power system development symposium conducted in 1973 so you just think about the time scale it was in 1832 the first crude electric vehicle was introduced but it took merely next 100 years it was in 1973 the first prototype was introduced to the automotive manufacturers start process so for past this 100 years only the internal combustion engine was rude and the electric vehicle lost its complete popularity in this mean time scale and it was in 1997 the first uh, hybrid vehicle was introduced to the human mankind so mass production hybrid vehicle it was in 1901 the hybrid vehicle was introduced but it took merely 100 years and it was in only uh, in the 20th century uh, that is in 2000 uh, that toyota come up with their mass produced hybrid vehicle known as toyota virus so this for past this 100 years the entire automotive market uh, was ruled by only the internal combustion engine and it was in 2006 Uh, here comes the hero of our electric vehicle so that is it is actually a silicon valley based startup so tesla motors is actually a silicon valley based startup and they just make a very huge announcement to the automotive makers uh, at that particular point of time they just uh, make an announcement that they will just produce a luxury electric sports car which would range to a distance of 200 plus miles so which was not even an achievable target at that particular point of time for uh, the remaining automotive uh, monopoly manufacturers and they come up with a very big statement and they have stayed with their statement and they have hold the market share to a greater percentage even at this particular point of time it was in 2006 and this accelerated the entire automotive manufacturers to work on their more electric vehicle so it was in only 2006 or later the electric vehicle once again gained a very big popularity and the penetration of electric vehicle has started and i hope you are having a clear view about uh, the internal combustion engine and the electric vehicle transition from uh, the timeline of zero to till date so what is this electric vehicle so any vehicle propelled by electric drive train draining power from a rechargeable battery or a portable or refillable battery can be coined as an electric vehicle so when talking about electric vehicle the main uh, advantage that people come to uh, come up with is that it doesn't provide any tail pipe emission yes i agree well with this particular statement that a uh, statement that it doesn't provide any tail pipe emission and uh, ev has no tail pipe emission and it reduce uh, co2 socks uh, nox and particulate matter emission to a greater percentage but you need to think about this in a different perspective so it doesn't emit any tail pipe emission only from the user end so it doesn't emit any tail pipe emission only from the user end so user end by means your vehicle won't emit emission so whatever the electric vehicle you have that won't emit emission but based on the prediction whichever we have seen earlier by 2030 the population of electric vehicle is going to be enormously high so for this electric vehicle we need excess electricity and for this electricity we would create an excess demand to the power plant for running the power plant it need to make use of excess fossil fuel so for running 
or handling the excess demand the power plant should make use of excess fossil fuel so this fossil fuel usage will once again create emission this fossil fuel usage will once again will create emission the tailpipe emission by means the tailpipe emission it won't emit emission from the tailpipe only from the user end but for propelling this vehicle we need electricity and for having electricity for a huge number of vehicles we need to rely on the power plant and we need to increase the demand that has been raised on each and every day all put together would create an excess pressure on the power plant to make use of additional fossil fuel to run the electric vehicle by the year end of 2030 and uh, based on my particular prediction it would be expected that even each and every state government might come up with an installation of solar power plant uh, on the rooftop for each household and a uh, huge amount of investment need to be required for this particular case so government might come up with their incentive to encourage the rooftop solar power plant in the upcoming 2 to 3 years in india so this is what is the actual prediction and you might have also heard about these in your own state so based upon the demand uh, raised on each and every state so government should come up with their interesting policy to handle the futuristic uh, electricity demand by the year end of 2030 so for that we need excess amount of electricity so damn sure government will come up with installation of solar uh, rooftop uh, panels and create and each and every household should be indigenous to create electricity so this would be the future electric plant for next 5 to 10 years in india so this is what is i have predicted as of now based upon the Uh, population news in india but our topic is not related with the electric vehicle introduction so our topic is focused on uh, the battery thermal management system in the electric vehicle so let me just give uh, the interesting news about this battery thermal management and i will just make it walk through into the upcoming slides so till previous slide i have been talking about one particular uh, statement that electric vehicle has gained population uh, population uh, electric vehicle has gained popularity and the penetration of electric vehicles have slowly increased as the days keep on increasing so this is what is the common statement i have been repeated for uh, repeatedly saying for for past 5 to 10 minutes but this news is entirely contradiction to whatever i have said earlier so this was the news in year by october 16 2020 so battery fire put bmw and ford on the back foot just as the electric vehicle take off so as the electric vehicle take off even leading automotive manufacturers such as bmw and ford have take a back rest so they have faced a small uh, fall in their penetration or small fall in their sales of electric vehicle because of one particular issue that is nothing but the battery fire and what is this battery fire and how it is going to be addressed is what this presentation is going to talk about and they have also started to create memes with respect to the this particular statement that vehicles going on flame aren't new in this electrical era so they coined this particular era as electrical era and they have estimated nearly 171k accident has been took place in us alone for recently for past 3 years and this is an electric vehicle that has been manufactured from hyundai so they coined this electric vehicle as electric vehicle kona and what actually the news related with this electric vehicle kona is that electric vehicle kona manufactured from hyundai is that hyundai considered a global recall of its electric vehicle kona after a battery fire issue has been reported so you can just see one common term that is relaying with the, both the two news above and below is nothing but the battery fire so it says that hyundai will recall its nearly 77000 kona electric vehicles worldwide so worldwide they have make a sales of 77000 vehicles and they have called back all their 77 vehicles to work on one particular issue that is battery fire so this were produced in that in the time period of between 2017 to 2020 and you can just see the catastrophic failure of this battery fire issue of hyundai electric vehicle kona where the entire vehicle has been distracted to a greater percentage and our presentation is focused on this battery fire issue and how we are going to thermally manage the battery i hope now you have having a clear idea about this particular uh, battery fire issue and i will just make you to walk to walk you to into the presentation so what we are going to focus on in the upcoming slide is we are going to focus more on the lithium ion battery 
so i'll just try make you to understand uh, why lithium ion battery is preferred in the upcoming slide but it is just predicted that the demand for lithium ion is going to be very higher as the year keep on progressing and it will reach its peak particularly in 2030 and by 2030 the maximum percentage of lithium ion demand would be lying only for the passenger ev vehicle so even our cell phone uh, laptop all make use of uh, the lithium ion batteries at this particular point of time but based on the prediction as of now by 2030 the demand for lithium would be higher and particularly it would be higher for the passenger ev and who is going to handle this particular demand in the near future so the reserve for lithium is higher particularly in china australia and argentina so once again as like uh, our gas price key, keep on soaring in 1960 to 1970s after 2030 the lithium ion battery price if the demand is much more higher the price might get its peak and it would once again create a excess pressure on this ev and we need to find an alternate source other than the lithium at that particular point of time and it is for your kind information uh, the future won't be lithium but as of now the future is predicted that lithium might take a better place and it is not that uh, india doesn't have the reserve for lithium so india is also having the reserve for lithium so uh, the number of uh, lithium reserve predicted is around uh, 1400 tons particularly in karnataka and for the financial year 2017 india have imported lithium batteries for a price of around 384 million and for the financial year 2019 it was 1.2 billion and think about the upcoming years from 2021 to 2030 so the import of lithium ion batteries is going to be enormously high to handle a very huge uh, transition of uh, internal combustion into ev by 2030 and all put together would create an excess pressure on the lithium demand in near future so this is what is the battery population status statistical data in india and worldwide and why this lithium ion battery is highly preferred so we need to thank alexander volto for the invention of his battery so which make use of uh, the zinc and silver at this initial stage so this works on the basic principles of electrochemical potential so electrochemical potential says that when an atom is having an higher tendency to lose an electron it would be get converted into ion and an electron so when an atom is having a higher tendency to lose an electron it would be get converted into ion and an electron and what actually happens is when you are able to provide two different pathway for it one pathway for the electron and one pathway for the ion this flow of electron in the copper coil or copper wire would create electricity so this is the basic working of any battery so our main objective is that you need to detach an electron from an atom and you need to ask the electron to flow through and copper wire and this flow of electron would create electricity in the forward it would be charging and in the reverse it would be discharging so only the base material would would get vary for different batteries so among the electrochemical series present lithium is having the higher tendency to lose an electron so that is the reason why lithium batteries are highly preferred so that is when you just place a lithium pellet in air or water it would immediately start to get react so the term immediately start to get react means it would immediately lose an electron if it immediately lose an electron if you provide if you are able to provide a pathway for it then you can just produce electricity so this is how a lithium with three electron would be looking like once it is exposed to air or water what actually happens is it will just lose an electron if it lose an electron if you are able to provide a pathway for this electron alone then you can just gain electricity and it would be get converted into lithium and an electron so this is lithium ion and an electron so as it is highly reactive lithium would always be placed inside and metal oxide for its stability so the overall cost of the battery is higher because of the lithium and this metal oxide so dominant amount of price is used only for these two components in your battery one is the lithium and second one is the cobalt oxide or the metal oxide so the lithium would be placed inside this metal oxide composition to make it much more stable and what you need to do is if you are able to separate the lithium atom from this combination so that is lithium cobalt oxide because as it is highly unstable you have been packed inside a stable element so when you are just able to detach the lithium from it once the lithium is get detached from this combination what actually happens is it will be get converted into lithium ion and an electron it would be immediately form lithium ion and an electron and if you are able to provide two different pathway for it 
so one for the flow of electron and other for the flow of lithium ion then actually the flow of electron would create the electricity so this is the basic working of any lithium ion battery or any battery so our objective is to detach an electron from an atom so in most often cases i will just uh, explain the same with a small small example so considered there is a sunset the moon has start to rise and uh, let us assume the lithium as a mysterious student and the cobalt as a faculty so this cobalt would be always be coupled with this mysterious student so when both of them are nearby what actually happens is this this lithium will be much more obedient so assume there is a sunset and moon has started to rise so the day is set and what actually happens is this faculty and the student have moved for uh, a camp so once the day is set they have planned to move to their particular location to settle down so assume the cobalt is moving to uh, their guest house and the lithium is moving to a dormitory for settling down as the day is set so once this lithium and cobalt is get detached what actually happens is this lithium would get converted into lithium ion and then electron once the day is set and once the cobalt has started to move away from this lithium and moving to its guest house what actually happens is if we get converted into lithium ion and electron assume you are having a barrier closer to this room and outside this barrier there is a swimming pool area so outside this barrier there is a swimming pool area so what actually happens is you are having a barrier so once the cobalt leave this lithium combination it will be get converted into lithium ion and electron so once it is get detached they will try to reach this swimming pool area for an assumption assume the lithium is very thin assume the lithium is very thin and the electron is somewhat fat assume the lithium is very thin and the electron is somewhat fat so the lithium will try to pierce through this gap and come and settle down in this swimming pool area whereas the electron need to take the longest path to come and settle down in this swimming pool area so once the sun rises what actually happens is they will get back to their original state so our main objective is that the lithium ion should pierce in the horizontal direction and the electron should take the longest path so this is the basic uh, charging and discharging mode of any battery particularly over here is the lithium ion battery so here you can just see uh, this is a combination of the cobalt oxide and the green color is nothing but the lithium so once the battery is connected to is and the copper plate is charged positively what actually happens is it will pull off the lithium from this cobalt oxide combination and once it is pulled off it would be get converted into an electron and a lithium ion so the electron would come and stick over this positive plate and the lithium would try to move through this particular zone for the swimming pool area so this electrolyte is nothing but the barrier and this graphite area is nothing but the swimming pool so this is how a lithium ion battery would be basically working so here you can just attach a battery and a load so in this meantime this electron would be traveling in forward direction and reverse direction and the lithium would moving in the front and rear direction so this is how the lithium ion battery actually works and one interesting uh, invention accidentally at this basic working of a lithium ion battery is the invention of solid electrolyte layer so for the first time when the lithium is allowed to pass through this electrolyte and reach over this graphite area what actually happens is it will just form a solid electrolyte layer on the outer side of the electrolyte so it will just create a barrier on the outer side of the electrolyte so this barrier would restrict the movement of electron in the horizontal direction you might have heard about the term known as you have been asked to uh, charge your battery 100 percentage for the first time when you purchase so for the first time when you purchase what you will be trying to do is you will be trying to pull away the lithium from the combination and ask all the lithium to move from one particular direction to other particular direction so when you are just asking all the lithium to move to other particular direction what actually happens is it will just form a strong barrier on the outer side of the electrolyte and this barrier would further restrict the movement of electron in the horizontal direction our only objective is that 
we are not asked or we are not supposed to allow an electron movement in horizontal direction at any particular point of time so if the electron moves in the horizontal direction it would create a short circuit and it might completely make a catastrophic failure to the entire battery so this is how a lithium ion battery works so lithium ion batteries Yes, Dinesh, please continue. Dinesh? Dinesh, your mic is in mute position. Please unmute your mic, Dinesh. Dinesh, are you audible? Yes, Dinesh, please continue. Okay, sorry for the interruption. No problem, please continue. Uh, I think so, I was in this particular slide. So lithium, uh, rechargeable lithium ion batteries are most suitable because it is having the higher tendency to lose an electron. So among the electrochemical series, lithium ion battery is having the higher voltage creation because only minimal amount of energy is required to detach an electron from it and you can easily ask the electron to move one particular side to another particular side. So that is the reason why lithium is highly preferred and one greater disadvantage is closely related to the temperature. We will understand more about this in the next slide. So thermal runaway is a phenomenon that can distract the consequence of uh, rapid temperature rise in gas generation or even battery explosion and this would be coined as the thermal runaway. To reduce the potential risk of this thermal memory, n number of safety devices has been incorporated into the battery. So one such day is safety devices, the safety vent. So because of this electrochemical reaction, so there is a huge possibility for formation of gas. So once the battery is completely enclosed, what actually happens is it would create excess pressure inside the battery and even the entire battery might get busted. So that is the reason why battery will have a small vent or a through hole inside uh, in the head of the battery. So the through hole present in the head of the battery is to release to release the excess gas that is created because of this electrochemical reaction. And the thermal fuse, uh, automatic reset device, shutdown separator, chemical shuttle, and coatings. So in, in between the electrolyte, you will have a separator. And this separator are coated with heat retardant material to handle high temperature zones. And heat retardant electrolyte are used. And heat retardant electrodes are used. So these are extensive research areas. And numerous research works are going, uh, particularly focusing on reducing the thermal runaway and safeguarding the battery at an excess case. And you can just see the formation of solid electrolyte layer on the outer side of the electrolyte. So this solid electrolyte layer restricts the movement of electron in the horizontal direction in a further way. So this is generated only one time. That is particularly when the electron moves, uh, sorry, when the lithium ion moves in the horizontal direction uh, at the time of first charging. And uh, let us discuss more about the battery thermal management system. So the battery is a key operating tool to drive EV. So the performance of EV actually depends upon the capacity of the battery, the operating period, the discharge rate, and the power density. One of the biggest issues with the battery is that it generates heat during charge and discharge period. So the best example is, assume you are having a mobile phone. So a mobile phone will make use of only lithium ion battery as of now, or lithium, lithium polymer battery. So in this particular case, when you just try to charge your battery, and after completely charging, if you just touch the outer case of your battery, you can just see, feel the sensation of heat generation at the rear side. So this heat generation says that at the time of charging, there is a huge possibility for heat generation, particularly in the battery. And in the same case, assume you are having your mobile phone and you are installing an high-end game to it, 
and meanwhile you are playing a video and talking with one of your close friend for past one hour so when you try to discharge the battery from 100 percentage to 20 percentage or above at a very fast rate what actually happens is this talks about the discharge period and even at the time of discharge period when you just touch the outer case of your battery you can just feel a higher temperature creation so all put together says that when you're just asking the electron to move from one particular direction to other particular direction either at a slower phase or at a faster phase this would create excess amount of heat on your battery and this should be very keenly monitored so that is what this battery thermal management is going to talk about and the rate of operating temperature of your ev lies between the temperature limit of minus 40 to 60 degrees celsius and the desired operating temperature limit is 15 to 35 you can just operate your battery from minus 40 to 60 but the desired operating temperature is 15 to 30 35 degrees celsius even leading mobile phone manufacturer uh, let us assume apple apple is suggesting to charge your battery only by removing your phone panel cover or phone outer case cover so each and every users uh, of mobile phone are purchasing and costly cover that has to be in cover on the rear side of your battery what actually this creates is it would be acting as an insulated material so whatever the heat generated in your battery should be uh, exposed to the atmosphere and thereby based on the thermodynamic condition it would reduce the temperature of the entire system if you are just placing an enclosed or insulated material closer to it what actually happens is the heat would be kept inside the system and would it would be keep on increasing the entire system's temperature so that is the reason why even apple is suggesting to remove your panel cover and charge your battery so this will typically in, uh, enhance your battery life in near future so even if you are not following it try to do the same in the upcoming year upcoming years so if the temperature goes beyond 35 degrees celsius we have tried to understand that uh, the battery can be able to operate at minus 40 to 60 but the desired temperature limit is 15 to 35 if the temperature goes beyond 35 degrees celsius or if the temperature falls below 15 degrees celsius we need to thermally manage it so what is thermal management is if the temperature goes beyond 35 we need to introduce a cooling system to it so just by introducing a cooling system you are going to pull down the temperature let us assume it is 45 degrees celsius if the battery temperature is 45 degrees celsius you need to introduce a cooler cooling system and you need to put down the temperature to 35 degrees celsius or assume your temperature is uh, zero degrees celsius so if the temperature of the battery is zero degrees celsius you need to introduce a heating system to it and you need to raise the temperature from zero to 50 degrees celsius so this is how you are going to thermally manage and maintain the temperature particularly in between the operating range so this is what is known as battery thermal management system if the temperature falls below or moves up you need to introduce either heating or cooling system to this particular uh, battery and raise the temperature and kindly make a note that at any particular point of time your battery of the lithium ion should not exceed 60 degrees celsius if it exceeds 60 degrees celsius it would result in a catastrophic failure so the safety limit of your lithium ion battery is 60 degree celsius and it should never exceed this particular point of time and there are n number of batteries uh, in market as of now people are making use of nickel cadmium uh, nickel metal hydride lead acid uh, lithium ion and lithium polymer so our focus will be uh, more on lithium ion and lithium polymer which is having once again the same operating range and the same safety limit of 60 degree celsius and we know the desired temperature range that is 15 to 35 and we need to introduce either a cooling or heating system to this particular device and put down a temperature once again to this particular zone. so we'll try to understand the effect of this battery uh, performance particularly in low temperature condition so this is a pictorial representation of a serious hybrid drive train where you can just see an internal combustion engine from that by making use of a generator the electricity is uh, passed on to the electric motor and this traction motor is connected with an final drive from this final drive the end wheel is around to rotate so here you can just see this is a serious hybrid drive train and let us assume this vehicle is in european condition which is having an atmosphere temperature of minus 2 degree celsius particularly in a heavy winter if it is minus 2 degree celsius based on the thermodynamic condition your battery outer pack may be closer to this minus 2 degree celsius and we are very much aware that the battery operating temperature 
or desired operating temperature is 15 to 35 degrees Celsius. But in this particular case, the battery temperature is of 15 to uh, minus 2 degrees Celsius. So for this to be thermally managed, what we need to do is we need to introduce a heating system to this particular case. Here you can just see a heater that has been presented in this particular case study. So air is allowed to pass through a heater and as the hot air is allowed to be exposed to the battery outer case, it would raise the battery outer case temperature and the overall temperature might rise from minus 2 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So this is what actually happens when you are just dealing with a low temperature condition on the battery thermal management system and for a high temperature condition. So we have already freezed what is the safety limit for your lithium ion battery. So that is 60 degrees Celsius. At any point of time, you should not ex exceed the limit of 60 degrees Celsius. But once you exceed 60 degrees Celsius, what actually happens is uh, at 85 to 120 degrees Celsius, the solid electrolyte might get decomposed. So I hope you are aware about what is solid uh, electrolyte. So at 825 to 120 degrees Celsius, the solid electrolyte might get decomposed. And after 120 degree, the graphite anode would react with the electrolyte. So graphite anode is the swimming pool area. So initial time, this graphite won't take part in the chemical reaction. But once graphite start to get react with the electrolyte, this electrolyte is nothing but the barrier. The thickness of the barrier would get reduced and that would create an additional option for the flow of electron in the horizontal direction. And at 130 degrees Celsius, what actually happens is the separator would start to melt. At 140, your electrolyte voltaization would happen. And at 150, the cathode decomposition would have happened. So think about, as I said earlier, the lithium is the mysterious student and the cobalt is the faculty. So for an assumption, let us assume the faculty is much more angry because of the student. What he will be trying to do is he will be trying to get the student detached from him. So if the temperature rise above 150 degrees Celsius, what actually happens is the cathode would decompose from this lithium combination. So this lithium would always be as lithium ion and electron. So this electron would have the tendency to act at any point of time. And at 200 degrees Celsius, the electrolyte might completely get decomposed. So this is the impact uh, particularly on the high temperature condition. And here you can just see uh, these are uh, the cylindrical batteries. And in this particular case, only one particular battery because of improper BMS or BTMS one particular battery has been completely busted and it has completely created a catastrophic failure to the entire wake. So this is how uh, the battery fire issue might happen, particularly in the electric vehicle or it may be uh, in your hybrid vehicle. So this should be uh, very much keenly focused. I hope now you are having a clear understanding about what is uh, battery thermal management system and its need and its related impact. So for our, this particular case, let me just uh, handle uh, only the high temperature condition. As we are focused more on high temperature condition, particularly India, so that is when the temperature exceeds above 35 degrees Celsius, we need to introduce a cooling system to pull down its temperature once again uh, to its operating temperature limit of 15 to 35. So this cooling can be done either means of uh, liquid, air, or uh, phase change material. For this particular uh, study, I'll be focusing more on this phase change material in a brief manner. I'll be focusing more on this phase change material. So what is this phase change material? A material with, signif uh, a material with significantly large value of a phase change enthalpy, that means which have an, uh, a better latent heat of fusion of melting and solidification, has the capability to store a large amount of thermal energy. So we need to introduce a system close to the battery that is able to store or uh, that is able to grab a large amount of heat from the system. So one such material is nothing but the phase change material. So we need to uh, try to understand it in a better way and so that we can have a clear view about it. So let us assume you are having a beaker of water and it is filled with water and you have placed a thermometer into it and you have uh, asked to heat this beaker. So what actually happens is as the temperature rise, you will have uh, different values in the, temp uh, in the thermometer and once you attain 100 degrees Celsius, what actually happens is 
the water would reach its boiling point so once the water reaching reach its boiling point if you see the beaker still it will have water it means that you have not achieved it doesn't mean that you are not achieved 100 degree celsius even when you achieve 100 degree celsius you need to maintain at the same temperature for a minimal amount of time scale to completely evaporate or completely uh, change all the water molecules into vapor so this what talks about the phase change this what talks about the phase change so we are converting the water from liquid phase to vapor phase so one thing we need to understand is that there would be a temperature rise from 0 to 100 degree celsius of the water so once the water attain 100 degree celsius you have to maintain at the same 100 degree celsius for a time scale so this constant temperature attainment is known as the phase change transition so this time is what highly interested in or battery thermal management issue so uh, let me just put up in a much more interesting way with an aid of uh, a small number so here you can just see what is the energy required for heating the water from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius so this particular circle talks about the water is at 0 degree celsius and here the water is at 100 degree celsius if you are able to calculate what is the energy required and when you are just making the area under this curve and trying to calculate it so overall the energy required for this particular case is very minimal and at this particular point your water would be at 100 degree celsius liquid and at this particular point it would be 100 degree celsius vapor so whatever the area under this particular curve that is transition from liquid to vapor it takes enormous amount of energy so it doesn't mean that uh, the energy required for converting water to liquid is high so the energy required for converting water from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius liquid is very minimal but the energy required for converting from liquid to vapor is enormously high so this could be understood very clearly with respect to this numerical uh, problem so let me just brief it up in a short way so assume uh, how much heat is needed to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius so once again i have considered the same case study we are having a beaker with with 1 kg of water so converted uh, with, with respect to its um, uh, respective si unit so 1 kg of water and a thermometer is placed inside when you have been asked to raise the temperature from 0 to 100 degree celsius what is the energy required so when you are just making to make a calculation with respect to that q q is the heat energy required and m is the mass of the fluid and cp talks about the constant pressure value and del t talks about the change in temperature so the change in temperature is from 0 to 100 degree celsius when you try to calculate what is the heat required it requires mainly 418.6 into 10 power 3 joules and after this particular case let us assume your water is at 100 degree celsius liquid this particular problem says that determine the amount of heat observed by 1 kg of water to change the phase from liquid to vapor now it is at 100 degree celsius liquid and you have been asked to convert it as 100 degree celsius vapor so 100 degree celsius vapor means this beaker should be completely empty but once the thermometer shows 100 degree celsius you can just see your beaker will have still some water content but our objective is that you need to completely vapor or completely empty the beaker so if it is completely the beaker is empty it means that all the water molecules has been converted into vapor so what is the heat required to convert the water from 100 degree celsius liquid to 100 degree celsius vapor so for that q is equal to m into lv so mass is 1 so the latent heat of water is 2256 into 10 power 3 so the heat required for this particular case is 2256 into 10 power 3 so it is merely five times higher it is merely five times higher to convert the water from liquid phase to vapor phase so this one such interesting material is what highly required for your battery thermal management issue i hope now you are having a clear idea about what is phase change and how much amount of energy is effectively used for this conversion so for this particular case uh, in this particular study i am going to focus on the organic pcm that is nothing but the paraffin so organic pcm can be paraffin and non paraffin and former involves fatty acid content 
so they are rather stable and high it is having higher later heat of fusion and also having a wide temperature limit and one greater disadvantage is the pcms are more flammable and it have low thermal conductivity so this pcm is nothing but the candle in your wax uh, sorry the candle in your house so you might have uh, each and everyone might have seen candle in your house so assume there is uh, a, a day has been set and the moon has raised and it's merely 10 o'clock it's merely 10 o'clock uh, in in the evening so it is 10 o'clock so at the time there is a power cut in your house so what you will be trying to do is you will be igniting a candle and assume you are having a high quality candle you are having a high quality candle and you are just waking up at morning 6 o'clock and you just see that the still the candle is alive so this candle is initially at a solid phase so after it is ignited it would reach its melting point after it reaches its melting point it would be get converted into liquid and after it is getting converted into liquid, it will be get converted into vapor. So once the day is set, you will see only a small portion of the candle is still alive. The candle will be looking like this. So this candle is initially in solid. Once it is get ignited, it will be get converted. It will reach its melting point. And after that, it will be get converted into liquid. And after getting converted into liquid, it will be get converted into vapor. So whatever the time that takes is enormously high. Think about the time is 10 o'clock in the night to morning 6 o'clock. Binesh, you are not audible. So this uh, particular slide talks about the TCM is in liquid form. Here the time C is equal to zero, and it takes nearly 90 minutes to completely get into solidification. And in vice versa case, your PCM is nothing but the wax in your home. So the candle in your home at T is equal to zero, your wax is in complete solid form. And here at 10 it has started to convert into liquid at 20 at half way of liquid and at 40 at a full way of liquid and it takes enormous amount of time to get converted from solid to liquid phase so this one interesting material is what we are going to use uh, in battery thermal management system to effectively cool the battery so we'll try to understand how we are going to use it uh, okay concerning with the time let me just move into one interesting study Uh, apart from uh, organic PCM, that is candle, people are also making use of inorganic materials. So inorganic materials are nothing but uh, the hydrated, uh, hydrated salts, metallic PCMs. Uh, metallic PCM says that you will have a copper mesh like this. So copper mesh is nothing but a sponge-like structure. So rather as like sponge, you will have a copper a rings connected each other into a single system and you can just try to incorporate with the PCM also. Uh, compared to the inorganic and organic differentiation, inorganics are thermally safe because it won't get ignite as candle is able to ignite and it is having high end latent heat than the organic PCMs. And one disadvantage is that the material uh, would get degrade as you are just going to thermally uh, creating a cycle so you will just uh, add heat to it remove heat add heat removing it so this thermal cycle might typically affect the material properties of your system so let me just give you a brief un uh, understanding with a small case study so this particular uh, research work talks about study on high powered lithium ion batteries using porous metal foam so using porous metal foam saturated with phase chain material so the phase chain material they have considered over here is nothing but the candle wax. They have considered the candle wax. So commercially available paraffin RT44HC has been considered, which is the organic PCM over here. And efficient cooling technique for encapsulation of a PCM with copper metal foam. So copper metal foam will be looking like this. So we can be able to understand it very much clearly with respect to 
the profile over here so this is how a copper metal foam will be looking like so you will have in between gaps and it would be connected by a small copper rings so this is how a copper metal foam would be looking like a copper metal foam will be looking like and for this particular case study what they have tried to do is they have just considered a high power lithium ion battery porous metal foam saturated with a phase change material so here we have considered a wax and a copper metal foam and for this particular case study they have considered a prismatic type lithium ion batteries and there are a total of nine numbers of lithium ion batteries which is placed inside an acrylic box and between each and every battery there is nearly 5 to 7 mm of gap so in between each and every battery there is 5 to 7 mm of gap and there is a thermocouple placed uh, at cell number 5 and cell number 9 so cell number 5 and cell number 9 are thermally monitored with respect to its temperature change so initially at t is equal to zero what is the temperature and based on overall case study of the time keep on get progress what is the temperature would be monitored very keenly so for the first case what i have tried to do is they have just tried to place air as a cooling medium so for the first case they have used air as a cooling medium that means that in between these batteries you will have five to seven in them gap and it is just filled by the air they, they have not introduced any cooling system in between these batteries and in the second case what they have tried to do is they have taken the paraffin wax they have melted the wax and they have poured the melted wax in between the battery pack so you can just see the white color layer over here so they have just poured the melted wax in between this prismatic type cells so whatever will have 5 to 7 mm gap and that is filled by the wax alone and in third case they have placed the copper mesh into it and they have poured the metallic copper mesh has been dipped inside a paraffin wax and that has placed inside the in between the batteries so here you can just see the combination of copper mesh along with pcm so here we have considered three case studies one is that only air is used for cooling and second the wax is used for cooling and in third case wax with the copper mesh is used for cooling so this is the three case studies that we are going to focus on in the upcoming slide so if air is used as a cooling so what we are going to conduct the studies here uh, in the x-axis it talks about the time and in y-axis it talks about the temperature as explained earlier you will have a thermocouple setup and temperature monitoring setup at cell number five and cell number nine what i'm going to do is i'm going to initially charge the battery for first 100 minutes so as we are very much aware about our uh, uh, mobile phone charging method so once the mobile phone is charged when you touch the outer case you can just sense that change rise in temperature that is evident with this particular uh, graph also as you are charging your battery for first 100 minutes what actually happens is the temperature rise from zero degree or the atmospheric 25 degree celsius to 40 degree celsius and after that you are cooling the system that means you are keeping the battery idle as it is for next 100 minutes for next 100 minutes i am just cooling the system and after that i am trying to discharge the battery from 100 percent to 20 percentage within next 50 minutes so based upon the battery capacity you can just uh, name this as 1c 2c 3c or 0.5c i won't move further into it so based upon the discharge rate once the battery discharge rate varies or when the battery discharge rate is very shorter what actually happens is it creates excess amount of temperature rise it is evident with this particular graph also so cell number five uh, result in a very high temperature of around let us assume it is 70 uh, sorry 68 degrees celsius so cell number five result in 68 degrees celsius whereas cell number uh, nine result in only 55 degrees celsius we are very much aware that from the previous slides our uh, desired temperature range is 15 to 35 and at any point of time we should not exceed the safety limit of 60 degrees celsius of the lithium ion battery but uh, for this case they have considered the safety limit as 65 so for, uh, we should never exceed the safety limit of 65 degrees celsius but for this discharge cycle the temperature of the battery has raised above 65 degrees celsius and it has displayed a temperature of around 68 degrees celsius 
if only air is used as a cooling medium then you can't thermally manage the battery in this particular case study so what we are trying to do is we are trying to pour the wax in between the system so when you try to pour the wax in between the system just imagine about the candle in your home imagine about the candle in your home. when you ignite it the candle would start to get melt after getting its melting point it will be alive for next uh, 10 to 20 minutes after that it will do it only it will slowly get converted into vapor and the size of the candle would get reduced so that is what is going to happen over here so for the same case charging is done and after that cooling is done and at the time of discharge the temperature rises enormously high but when you just make use of the pcm into the system the pcm would start to melt particularly at 42 degrees celsius the melting point of PCM is 42 degrees Celsius. After reaching 42 degrees Celsius, it would be absorbing the heat to get converted into vapor. So, enormous amount of heat would be absorbed by the PCM and it would reduce the entire system temperature. So, that is the reason why the temperature has been set down from 55 to 48 degrees Celsius. And for cell number 5, the temperature has stepped down from 68 degrees Celsius to 53 degrees Celsius. I hope now you are able to understand this. So because of pouring PCM into this particular system that is in between the cells, the PCM is allowed to get poured in between the cells. As the PCM is placed, when you try to charge and discharge it, the heat would be absorbed by the PCM and it would be trying to get converted into liquid. So once it gets converted into liquid, it would be you need to give excess amount of temperature to getting converted your wax into liquid to vapor form. So at this mean time, you need to be constantly to keep on supplying that temperature. If you are not supplying it, it will be once again get converted into solid. So this is how you can try to thermally manage your battery. I hope now you are able to understand why the wax is poured in between these cells. And for further case study, they have come up with introducing uh, the copper mesh along to the system. So as a huge variation is placed only in the discharge cycle, I have just presented only the discharge plot over here. So with respect to time, and temperature so the black color is only air is used if you use only air the temperature would be linearly rising and when you make use of uh, the pcm or pcm with the metallic foam so there would be a drop in temperature because of this phase change capability of the paraffin bag and here you can just see the temperature, uh, sorry, the phase change material variation. So particularly 10 to 42 degrees Celsius, if you just keenly monitor the wax, it would be in the solid form. From 42 degrees Celsius, you need to constantly maintain the same temperature for next 30 minutes. If you are able to maintain the 30 minutes only, it would be converted from solid to liquid. At this mean time only, there would be a huge temperature absorption. So till this particular point, both the air and the solid would be reacting in the same pattern. So this black color is the air and this red is PCM and this is PCM with the metallic form. So till this temperature, uh, sorry, for this particular case, it would be acting linear. After that, only the melting point comes into account. So this is the constant temperature zone. So whichever we are seeing in the earlier plot. So this temperature at this particular zone only there would be a temperature absorption and it will try to pull down the temperature effectively well below the safety limit of your battery i hope now you are having a clear view about it if you make use of air as a medium the cell number five temperature would be 68 degrees celsius for this particular case study and if you are able to pour pcm into in between the batteries you can try to step down the temperature from 68 to 53 degrees celsius and when you are able to combine pcm with metallic foam you can even further pull down the temperature from 53 degrees celsius to 48 degrees celsius but we are very much aware that our operating temperature limit is 15 to 35 15 to 35 so you need to introduce further more system to this battery pack to step down the temperature from 48 to 35 so this is how you can just safeguard the battery and you won't move into the high temperature zone if you move into the high temperature zone or exceed above 60 you need to lose solid electrolyte layer your electrolyte decomposition would happen cathode decomposition would happen all might create an excess pressure and result in any catastrophic failure so we are introducing a system to reduce the temperature well below 
the safety limit of your battery so that is 65 degrees celsius i hope now you are having a clear view about the battery thermal management system with respect to a small case study and this is how the battery has been modified so rather making use of only air you can deal with the pcm poured in between the batteries or pcm with metallic foam placed in between the batteries so the current research progress was made with a combined system so this is battery and the blue color is a pcm and this is the aluminum enclosure so they are making a component incorporating the pcm itself so this is a battery and this is pcm which is having a thickness of around 5 to 7 mm and an aluminum enclosure and further studies are going on incorporating nanoparticle uh, along with the pcm or making use of fins clubbed with the pcm or a copper metallic mesh so whichever we have seen in the previous study so metallic mesh combined with pcm so these are the current research progress that is allowed to be running on and simulation work is also running on combining the pcm with uh, the plus type uh, fins v type fins y type fins and x type fins so different types of fins are also effectively used to cool the entire system so in most often cases i have considered this particular book and gone through these uh, research articles on creating the particular presentation and we have also come up with an interesting review article on battery thermal management which has been recently approved for publication in journal of cleaner production and if i get uh, the final copy of it i will be sharing along with the organizer and you can just try to explore more about these research article uh, the review article whichever we have made on the battery thermal management system worldwide and now the session is open to uh, the audience and i hope i didn't more you much for past one hour or above uh, by giving this lecture and now you can just come up with your uh, interesting queries about whatever we have discussed uh, till now and if you need to ping me up you can just ping me up uh, by this mobile number or email id at any point of time thank you yes uh, participants can ask their queries to dinesh now Dinesh, one of the participants has asked in the chat post that is there any cases reported in India regarding battery fires? Dinesh, your mic is in mute condition. Can you please change it? Oh, sorry for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the participants yes, has asked that is there any cases reported in India regarding battery fires? Yes, they have been reported. Even I have faced uh, a small issue with battery fire. So one of my research group over here have conducted a small uh, battery fire issue case study, and we have tried to combine uh, four to five lithium-ion batteries in series, and uh, we have tried to conduct that study. And what actually happens is it resulted in a small catastrophic failure. One of the battery has completely get busted. So you can't exactly predict uh, the battery busted might be because of one particular reason. It may be because of any manufacturing defect or improper B BMS or BTMS. But there are huge number of uh, case studies has been reported worldwide because of this battery fire issue. And in there is have also reported with certain case studies and which won't be much more uh, pronouncedly say because it is very very nominal as of now. I hope I have answered for your question, sir. Yes, and uh, uh, Rins Jacob has asked uh, one more question. Yes, what sir. are the current uh, battery thermal management system for heating as well as cooling, so that temperature is between 15 to 35 degrees Celsius? Uh, Tesla is making use of liquid cooling. Sir. Tesla S model is coming up with the liquid cooling. So I hope uh, you might have seen about the Tesla batteries. So for better cooling only, they have tried to reduce the battery into a cylindrical type. So whatever the case study that I have presented over here talks about prismatic batteries. But they have come up with a cylindrical battery coupled with a copper coil or copper coolant coil facing close to it. So the copper coils would be in a curved manner. So they are making use of liquid cooling. So whatever we have, uh, I have addressed earlier talks about a passive system for cooling. So for cooling, you need doesn't need to give any energy for the PCM to ask it to observe the heat. But when you are making use of a liquid cooling, you need to introduce the motor and the liquid need to be keep on circulating. So there is an active system. So overall, the price of the system might get, get enhanced when you are making use of liquid cooling. But liquid cooling is better than the passive cooling. So that is the reason why Tesla is making use of liquid cooling. 
Uh, I hope I have answered for your question, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, any other participants, sir? Uh, please ask your queries. Good morning, Dinesh. Sir. Uh, what is the main reason actually for heating? Is it on the battery side or on the load side? Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it should be addressed by both, sir. It is. It cannot be complemented only from the battery or only from the load. So we are just asking the electron to move from one particular side to other particular side. So this flow of electrons create heat, and whenever you are trying to detach the lithium from your cobalt, it creates heat. And think about the fast charging. So when you are just dealing with fast charging, the CC and CV percentage in your charging profile would get varied. This fast charging or DC DC charging would create excess amount of heat. So you will be asking the electrons to move at a very faster rate. So all this would create heat generation in your battery. So heat generation cannot be completely get rid away in your battery charging and discharge cycle. So you mean to say that even though we isolate the positive terminal and the negative terminal with the load, there are chance for heat. Yes, the heat generation might be inside from inside the battery. So as I said earlier, uh, I have uh, described about the lithium and cobalt. So mischievous student along with the faculty. When you are just asking to detach this lithium from the cobalt, even this itself creates heat. It is itself an heat producing reaction. So because that is an electrochemical reaction taking place inside the battery. When you are trying to detach and attach the lithium with cobalt, it will also create heat. Uh, because the electrical thing we can manage with simple yes, way, yes. so that's what I yes. was wondering. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Very, very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, hello, sir. I have a question, sir. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, that uh, using the air bags and all, you have done the simulation, and you have checked that uh, which one will be the better for it. So. Uh, yes, so what parameter you consider is uh, how you have done the simulation for it using this software sir. so i have just present only a glimpse of idea so what i have tried to do is i have tried to charge in different charging topology and i have tried to charge discharge the battery in different topology for each case i have keenly monitored what is the temperature range in each and every cells so i have just given you a general perspective so different charging cycle need to be followed and different discharge cycle need to be followed because each and every uh, users will deal with a different discharge rate so when you and uh, myself is getting a same mobile phone i may be using for playing games and you may be using only for uh, the talking purpose so the demand whichever the end user raises is entirely different it means that the discharge rate is entirely different so for different discharge rate you need to study each and every cells and for different charging rate, you need to study each and every cells and keenly monitor what is the temperature rise. And the ambient temperature should also be taken into account. So when whether you are just using a mobile phone in India or you are just using the mobile phone in uh, an European condition, the atmosphere temperature is entirely varied. Uh, so for uh, simulation purpose, software, for simulation purpose, I have just deal with the various discharge cases. No? So 1C, 2C. 3C, so different so you have taken measurements you have taken measurements in the yes. experiments experimentally yes, yes. you have taken that value and then you have yeah. plotted that graph yeah yeah Actually, this cannot be solved or analyzed by using any so it is not possible by doing uh, I couldn't get okay. you clearly that's right. all my question but like using a yeah. DDD or something like we can use cells, this battery cells, if you divide into the uh, some uh, body line condition or something, or using the finite level method, or uh, like that, can we do yeah, it? Yeah, we are. Yes, yes. Yeah. There are, there are a huge number of studies in finite element analysis with battery. I have not presented it. Even one of my team is also working on it. So this works on the finite element study. So here we have. Design the battery. So this would be a final elemental study. So this we have designed a battery and we have given the properties for PCM and we have given the properties for the fin which is make, made, made by copper. What we will be doing is we will experimentally study what would be the temperature of your battery and we will give that particular temperature to this heat source. 
and based upon this we will try to understand how this pcm would melt and how the heat would be dissipated to the copper coil so we will first initially try to study with respect to the temperature uh, experimentally so we will place a battery and we will try to charge and discharge it and we will get the t versus t plot t in terms of seconds and t with respect to degree celsius so we will try to understand the ts and tc plot and thereby you will try to understand what would be the temperature for different discharge rate condition if you are able to get that data you can just create a heat source and give that particular temperature to whatever the profile you are given in the center and you will give the properties for tcm and we will give the properties for the metal so thereby you can just make an uh, finite elemental analysis steady over here i hope i have answered for your question thank you sir oh uh, yes okay. yes sir thank you Dinesh, uh, I have a query. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Dinesh, uh, actually for uh, electric insulation, we will be using different types of dielectrics. Yes, sir. So what happens is as time passes, the dielectric strength of this insulation gets deteriorated. So sure, my, question get, uh, is, okay. my question to you is, uh, uh, just like what you have explained in today's session, Several uh, types of materials can be used for thermal isolation also. But the same issue will be coming here also as time passes uh, due to this uh, continuous uh, charging and due to this continuous discharging cycle and all. Uh, this material is getting exposed to different thermal conditions and the life of this uh, material also gets deteriorated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So that so, is the reason reason why they are coming with with different topologies for charging so our okay. heat source is battery okay. i'm just See, not whatever, whatever topologies i understood uh, uh, what you are coming to say but uh, my query is whatever topologies uh, uh, if they are coming with uh, different topologies it's quite good like if they are coming with uh, fast charging uh, mm -hmm. and in slow charging these issues are very less all yeah. those things are fine but uh, my query is like is there any material disorder so far so that uh, which can be used for a long time uh, purpose. That means it's a thermal insulation won't get deteriorated due to the usage. Uh, if there are any material, then what is it? And uh, why people are not using that? So it actually varies with respect to thermal cycle sources. So that is the reason why still extensive research are running on this particular phase change material. Sir. So we are the, they are not come up with unsaturated material as of now. So each and every one is using different materials according to their condition, but damn sure this material would degrade with whatever the question you are raised. So as of now, they are just making use of liquid cooling, hybrid cooling with different materials, but they are not saturated, get saturated with respect to material because as material keep on evolve, they are just keep on modifying this particular material. So it is not saturated as of now, sir. Okay. And another thing is uh, like uh, uh, in the battery swapping and all, now this battery swapping technology is also becoming quite popular. Yes, Even sir. though it is only for two wheelers and three wheelers as of now, hmm. my query to you is uh, when they are uh, replacing the battery pack, are they replacing this uh, complete uh, cover, uh, this thermal system also along with it or no, just no. the battery? So as of now, they are just thinking use of making use of their own batteries to be get replaced so if you are just making use of an older bike you have been suggested to replace only older batteries and you are not suggested to make use of different batteries so whatever the case that can be detached from the older batteries pack should be replaced with their own setup that has to be incorporated in this existing model so that is one of the greater disadvantage that lies in battery swapping so if yes, battery yes. swapping is done with different companies of batteries you can't just like replace your 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 vehicle battery with some other battery. So if you are just making use of the same batteries, you will get the same output drive. And think about you are just placing your Bola battery and some other person comes and pick it and walk away. So some other uh, and second graded battery might be pleasant and you can't be able to push put it in your vehicle and able to run. So if you are just thinking about battery graphics, it should be done with their own particular agency. Let us assume either it can be Ola or Honda Electric. When you are just dealing with this particular agency alone, the entire pack would be 
able to detach and attach in their particular function. So the entire system would be replaced and it would be placed again. So in main theme, only the battery would be replaced and it is better to stick on with their agency batteries alone. Okay, Dinesh. Okay, Dinesh. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, now I request uh, anyone of the participant. Uh, Mr. Akshay Jain, can you please give a feedback to Dinesh, please? Akshay Jain, sir. Anyone of the participant is requested to come forward and give a feedback to Dinesh, please. We all are faculties, right? We must step forward and give a feedback. I am just asking you to just give a feedback. Yes, Padma, ma'am. Sir, good morning, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, yes. sir good morning, sir. I'm Arthur uh, Sadi from Well Tech. Yes, sir. This is wonderful. In his bonus subramaniam, uh, uh, not only today FTP, previously I am just uh, uh, listening to many testimonies uh, about Dinesh bonus subramaniam. The wonderful lectures is uh, is in a uh, uh, potential uh, person to deliver this kind of uh, uh, area of uh, questions and uh, is given a uh, wide cover in the battery management and then uh, uh, the thermal management in batteries. Uh, once again, uh, thank you. And then, uh, uh, I give, as I, I like to thank this uh, uh, FTP coordinator to give them an opportunity to uh, to participate uh, this uh, FTP. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Dinesh, uh, Panmir Selvam, sir, please give your feedback, sir. Uh, sir, can you please can you please keep your mouth somewhere closer to your mouth? You are not audible clearly. Uh, okay. Uh, is it audible now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Okay. Sir, uh, the session was very uh, Thank you, Paneer Selvam, sir. Dinesh uh, Balasubramanian, on behalf of College of Engineering, Talashiri, and all the participants, uh, I am very thankful to you for coming with us uh, for such a wonderful presentation. And we are very happy to have you because you are the only international presence uh, in our FTP. Thank you, Dinesh. It was thank really you. a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It gives me an immense pleasure, too. I would like to thank once again the management principal head of the institution and the organizer for giving such an interesting opportunity to explore my perspective on this particular topic. Thank you once again. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Same to you, Dinesh. Bye. Participants, uh, I have shared with you uh, the link for the session's attendance. All are requested to fill it. And uh, we will break uh, now and we will resume at 11.15 for our second session. Thank you.